Dallas. I will be your host for the next hour here on News Now from Fox. We are continuing to bring you live feeds from our sister stations across the Lone Star State, Dallas, Houston, and Austin. Live coverage from our uh, Fox stations there with the historic conditions that we are seeing. Snow, ice, power outages, just deaths at this point. At least nine people in Texas have died as a result of these winter storms. So I actually want to bring you a live guest here at the uh, 8, 10 a.m. mark here on the East Coast. I am joined right now by Houston Police Chief Art Acevedo. Art, how are you doing? I know as a first responder in these unprecedented times in the Lone Star State, this must be incredibly hard to watch your community like this. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a tough uh, three days uh, for our community and obviously for our state and, uh, and, and really for our country. This is extended beyond Texas. Um, We've been uh, working nonstop as a police department and the firefighters, brothers and sisters have been working nonstop to keep our community safe. And when you see folks suffering, uh, including our own families that are at home with uh, with their uh, their own problem, power loss, uh, pipes bursting, uh, it's been a tough few days, but uh, together we're gonna get through this uh, with our community, just like we always do here in Houston. Absolutely, and Art, you know, speaking of winter storm related deaths in Texas, excuse me, Houston specifically has recently seen deaths. I believe it was a mother and child who died as a result of carbon monoxide poisoning. Can you kind of explain what happened? You know, what's sad is that uh, folks are desperate uh, for warmth. You know, if uh, you can only have so many blankets in a home and if, and God forbid, uh, if, you, if, if you don't have enough, uh, you end up making choices in terms of using uh, your stove or barbecues or even sitting in cars. And so our officers and firefighters responded to a, a home uh, where sadly the entire family was uh, poisoned by carbon monoxide, uh, which as you know, is odorless. You don't, you don't, you don't smell it. You don't see it, you, you know, you don't taste it. And uh, a, a child and a mother uh, passed from that. And another child is in critical condition. Uh, and so I, I think it uh, highlights the fact that uh, you know, uh, you need to go to warming centers that are open throughout the city uh, if you need to, but please do not utilize uh, items that are not meant for uh, to, to, uh, for, for warmth uh, in your home. Uh, and then on top of that, we've had uh, a couple of other people uh, die from the, the exposure, a couple of our homeless folks. Uh, some don't need the warning to go to the shelters. We've transported the folks to shelters. We have 800 homeless in shelters, but uh, we've lost two. And uh, we believe that uh, some of the other deaths that we've uh, that we've had this uh, past few days will end up being uh, weather related, but we'll have to wait for the medical examiner's report for a final determination. So it's been a tragic few days. Yeah, and you know, Chief, I wanna ask you, how is it possible to know if there is carbon monoxide in your home, especially when people don't have power and they're using devices such as generators? Yeah, you know, homes uh, with the modern codes, you, you're supposed to have uh, uh, alarms, uh, smoke alarms that include the carbon monoxide uh, alarm and that are not only electric uh, plugged in, but also with battery uh, backup. And so, uh, unfortunately, this is a working class city in terms of a lot of folks, uh, you know, are, 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 are just the, the salt of the earth, and but uh, they don't have... Uh, uh, the proper alarm system. And so uh, the other thing that people do is they get in their cars and they sit in the garage. They think that with the garage open that that's enough circulation uh, when it isn't. So like the fire chief here uh, has made real clear, if you're going to use your car for warmth, you've got to uh, get outdoors, get it completely out of the car, make sure you're in an area where you have plenty of circulation. And so, you know, my heart aches uh, for our community. Uh, and, you know, uh, quite frankly, you'll, not, you'll never know the extent until people start to uh, trying to contact relatives, who knows what we, what else we may find, but we're hopeful that it won't be uh, that many more deaths. Absolutely, and you know, I think that another important point is road conditions. These The snow is piling on top of the roads. We actually spoke with a sister station in Houston and Austin. Austin showed freezing rain. I know you guys as patrolmen are out on the roads a lot. What have you guys seen just driving around the town as first responders checking on your community? Yeah, you know, I, I like to leave from the front, so I spent a lot of time in my own police car, black and white. But now I'm out in the uh, in the city, 
with uh, some of my assistant chiefs, uh, and we've had close to 900 uh, traffic crashes since uh, 6 p.m. Uh, Sunday night, Valentine's Day. Uh, so that's 900 crashes. Fortunately, as we've been driving around with the slip roads and uh, with Mayor Turner and others urging people to stay home, Houstonians are a community that is such a privilege to serve because they listen. Our roadways have been uh, lightly traveled, and as a result, we've only had one fatality, one traffic fatality in America's uh, biggest, uh, fourth biggest city, uh, soon to be third largest city in the biggest city in Texas. And that just speaks volumes as to the mutual respect and trust that the people we serve have with our police department and with our elected officials. And I think it speaks volumes as to the leadership of, uh, of the city and the, and the community that we serve. One fatality is uh, much lower than what we normally have in a, in a four day or three day, almost four day period uh, in the city. And, and we're very thankful for that. I was going to say, you know, these are just conditions that Texans really are not familiar with driving in. What advice do you have to people who may be going out to try to find food or warmth and are relying on vehicles for transportation? Yeah, I mean, we have been advising people to stay off the roadways uh, because the conditions have just been horrific. We've had to close down a lot of highways in the last few days. But the advice I would have if you are having to drive, if you're, if you're forced to drive, if you need to drive, slow way down. A slow day down, a don't slam on the brakes, give yourself plenty of distance. And remember, we have a lot of traffic signals uh, around the city that are out because of the loss of power. Treat those intersections as a four-way stop sign. I think last night I made about three different stops of people that are just driving right through the intersection uh, with the traffic signals out, not realizing uh, or not caring enough to stop. And uh, so treat those as stops. And if you do that uh, and avoid uh, elevated roadways, uh, you have a much better chance of getting to your destination safely without crashing. Absolutely. Well, Houston Police Chief Art Acevedo, is there anything else you would like to tell your community, not just in Houston, but to Texans all around, really trying to brave these unprecedented conditions? Hey, my, I'm praying for my community. I'm praying for my officers and their families and just know that the men and women in blue, uh, we're not going to give up on you, so don't give up on us. We'll get through this together and, and hope and uh, sunshine is right around the corner. So we're about a day or two away, uh, we'll be back to normal. Absolutely. Well, Art Acevedo, thank you so much for joining us here on News Now from Fox. We commend you and your team for keeping Houston safe and for giving these updates from your state. Thank you very much. Have a great night, uh, day. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate.